show, Five Star Fam. I'm AJ, and this is Glenn. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly, and yes, at the top of the show, we welcomed Glenn. He's from Five Takes from the Five Stripes. Of course, he is, uh, yeah, the venerable host and wonderful guy uh, from... Uh, that podcast that has now joined us on this network. And so, yes, very, very big welcome. We are uh, humbled by your by your presence. And uh, yes, uh, you know, LA United, we, uh, we also did some business. Uh, speaking of that, we, in game two, slapped four on the Columbus crew. And, oh boy, I mean, we didn't expect that. I didn't really uh, think it was going to be a shootout, I think, but after uh, a, uh, you know, a pretty comprehensive loss in Columbus, uh, yeah, we needed all to do, and LA United, the players, they held a meeting, a players-only meeting to uh, pretty much do what they needed to do here, and it was, uh, yeah, get back on track, make sure that the, uh, the players had the right mindset, and I think as well, you know, the fans, we came in and we did uh, something that we haven't really been doing all season, which is getting behind the team and, you know, pretty much making as much noise as possible for 90 plus minutes. And yep. I think it really helped. It really, really helped. But yeah, before we get too much deeper into the review of that game two, uh, yeah, Big shouts out to our Patreon members and uh, from them with the uh, highest tiers, uh, with Gavin, with Andrew Rowicki, with Jordan Beck, now Faruqi, Ariel Acosta, and Chris James. But uh, yeah, also remember to subscribe on uh, YouTube. We are on the road to 10,000 subs, so help get us there. Uh, we have grinded. So, yeah, definitely, we would love your help. But anyway, yeah, so uh, Columbus Crew, I mean, you know, last time out at the Benz, they they really played us tough. They bossed us on our pitch. You know, it, uh, it kind of made me very fearful. I think on a lot of people's <laughs> brackets, they yeah, were probably is. winning MLS Cup. But now... We probably put a little bit of fear and doubt into their minds. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I would say probably the, the team that had the second best transfer window in MLS, uh, next to, of course, Inter-Miami. Uh, yeah, I think with good reason, you know, the, the players that they have with uh, Cucho Hernandez, with Julian Gressel, with uh, Darlington Nagby. I mean, it, it's, it's a team that's basically... Uh, yeah, super dangerous, and not even to speak of Diego Rossi, but in this match, right. besides Cucho Hernandez, they were largely pretty quiet. Besides a Rossi uh, assist for the Cucho Hernandez goal, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we were able to uh, put four past them, of course, like we said. But uh, you know, we'll kind of go over them, and then we'll pick a favorite here. But uh, but Glenn, what what are your uh, you know your your thoughts initially from uh, kind of a recap of that match. So the match was surprising, right? Like on a lot of levels. I don't like to be a pessimist, but I wasn't going in optimistic. I, I call it realistic. Columbus is a really good team. They're fourth for a reason, and that performance that we gave away. Yes, we're missing Tiago. But that just didn't look like Atlanta United at all. The style, the way we play. So we needed a big turnaround. You said it, man. You said it. We came into this match. We had it all to do against the crew. And we did it all. All of it. Four goals. That's Atlanta United, right? Like we get a, we get a lead and we need that early lead. Thank God we get it. First goal is everything for us. Game state is everything. For, for a lot of teams in this game, but especially for us. Thanks to Goose, I mean, we needed him to stand tall. He did, despite getting scored on twice. He stopped that first goal from going in. 
in like the first 10 minutes. And that was clutch. That was crucial. And then from there, I mean, we approach the game like, like we should. We get a lead, but we're not like other teams where you can maybe sit back a little bit, protect that lead. We're better off going for the second goal, going for the third goal, going for the fourth goal. Then we are to just, hey, 1-0, 2-1. All right, let's get out of here with that. We're better off taking a few risks going forward and trying to pad the lead even further. So it was nice to see. I think we needed it. By we, I mean the, the team, the players, the fans, myself. Um, it's been tough this past couple of years with this team, with life. Uh, with a lot, with a lot of things all converging at once, and maybe I'm just I'm just speaking for myself here, and and probably Kristen and Jennifer. We talked about this briefly on on the Five Takes Pod the other night, where we all just really needed that call it a release, whatever you want to call it, um, that performance, and to have everything come together the way it did last night, the vibes, the energy from the crowd, all these great moments for different goal scorers that was so so badly needed so thank you boys that's what we've been clamoring for and now we've got an opportunity to go do something in columbus and i think we did give them something to think about i'm sure they're still comfortable i would be if i was columbus you have lost one game uh the whole season at home that's pretty good pretty good we haven't had a lot of joy there we haven't had a lot of joy with Columbus to begin with, home or away. But I think we've given ourselves a, a real chance. And now we can go in Sunday, heads held high, put in a good performance. Whatever happens from there happens from there, right? Like, just put in a good performance. If we win, outstanding. The whole perspective on the season changes. That's amazing. If we lose, but we show up. And we'll I'll we'll we'll get to our, sad, our thoughts but... on the uh, you know the the next match, but yeah, we'll uh, you know stay on on this match. And I think as well, uh, you know, full transparency, we are filming this on a Thursday. Uh, so last night, yes. I mean, maybe it's the uh, the hangover from your pod uh, when we filmed it, it elsewhere, <laughs> where uh, it yeah, Ooh, we. Uh, <laughs> We definitely got a little tipsy uh, that night, and uh, if you guys haven't listened to that pod, definitely uh, go over to the... Yeah, it's a lot. hilarious, really. I think uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there were some uh, very funny takes, and uh, yeah, Michael even uh, said afterward, he was like, oh man, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if I should drink next time. <laughs> but... I think he absolutely <laughs> should drink next time. I think that should be a staple of the show. Oh, man. Yeah, no, we should just uh, absolutely get him as sloshy as possible. But, uh, no, it's uh, no no, uh, no college bro uh, <laughs> vibes there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, this match with uh, the goals, I think it even started with the non-goal. You know, with yes. Caleb Wiley's... Uh, you know, yeah. offside goal, it set that tone. It allowed the team to play, I think, a little bit more free because they realized once they saw the net bulge a little bit that, okay, yeah, game on, we can do this. And yeah. this is not that difficult. And, yeah, I mean, that uh, that first, like, 30 minutes, I think it was, uh, you know, really, really good. Uh, I think we were, uh, yeah, I mean, battling with them a little bit. I mean, you know, yeah. Columbus Crew still yeah. uh, showed their class, but uh, I think we were able to, yet, yeah, you know, take that control a little bit. And uh, when they gave Brooks London way too much space at their own peril, it was off to the races pretty much because uh, Brooks London, yeah, he will pick out a pass if you give him the time. Uh, and especially from that byline, yeah, there it is. And yeah, yeah Yorko Siakamakis, man, he puts that absolutely That's... where he cannot, where the keeper cannot stop it. I mean, off the incredible from him. Yeah, off two, the post. two assists and a goal. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know unprecedented, really, uh, for an LA literally Hanford. unprecedented. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, three goal contributions is really, really good in a playoff match. Uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's like even two, 
I can't even think of really a player that maybe did that for us. Uh, they didn't. He's the yeah. first Atlanta United player to have three goal contributions in a playoff match. Mm -hmm. The first one to do it. Exactly. And so, you know, like maybe Miggy had two maybe at, uh, at one point sure. in one of the matches. I can't remember. Might have. Yeah, maybe it was Julian Gressel. Maybe it was Franco Escobar who, uh, you know, playoff Escobar. Playoff Escobar, baby. Exactly. Like, but... Uh, yeah, you know, that just uh, kind of set the tone a little bit, but <laughs> right before halftime, uh, yeah, it's, uh, mm -hmm. we've seen this picture before, we've seen this movie, and uh, oh, yeah. Columbus Crew, yeah, it all, all it took was just a moment of magic, and uh, I mean, really, yeah, Diego Rossi, I mean, it's it like a decent pass, but it's all Cucho Hernandez, the ability to be able to take that first touch away from Miles Robinson, a really, really good defender, as we know, and take him out of the game and just beat Brad Guzan at his near post. <sighs> He's got his third goal uh, in two matches, Cucho Hernandez. He is a menace to us. And, uh, yeah. And how much does everyone. he... Yeah, and everyone, really. But how much does he remind you of, like, say, uh, Joseph Martinez? Because, for me, like, I see the, the parallels, but... I wonder. It's a really good point, and when we get to talking about the upcoming match, I think it's a point we can exploit. Uh, because, uh. I mean, when Joseph was at the peak of his powers with us, he was banging in 30 goals. High 20s anyhow, right? Mm -hmm. We were very dependent on him for our goals. Mm -hmm. Majority of the goals coming from him. It's not so much the case now with this new Atlanta United, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we had four different goal scorers. You don't know where we're going to hit you on our night. Mm -hmm. When we're playing our game, when we're in form, when we're healthy, when we're not suspended through silly yellow cards, reds. We can hit you a lot of different ways, and we showed that last night. Mm -hmm. Columbus, they're good, don't get me wrong. They've got the best midfielder probably of all time yeah. in Nagby, that Atlanta area driver. Yeah, for MLS, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, yeah, not globally, but just yeah. in this league. <laughs> certainly within the last in recent history last 10 years anyhow mm -hmm. but a lot comes off Cucho's foot right mm -hmm. if we can neutralize that very interesting maybe we got something yeah I, I, I like the uh, the parallels uh, and maybe yeah it's something that we can exploit if we could starve he him is, of service so he is Joseph-esque he is he is yeah. that poacher he, he does have that quality he's, he's not all that dissimilar and when anybody, when we were playing with Joseph, would try to shut him down, that would frustrate us. So we might be able to do a little something there. Maybe. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, yeah, uh, it, it might be something to look for in the third match. But, yeah, uh, you know, it became 1-1 after that. And, yeah, you, you, you know, m maybe might have seen the fans' heads drop a little bit, the players' head drop. Uh, in some previous matches, but no, it was uh, it was a different playoff atmosphere, and yeah, Atlanta United, they, yeah, they, they, yes, they got scored on six minutes later, but very quickly right after that, they answered with another goal, and this was a very very brilliant team goal, uh, Saba doing a lot of work inside the box, chopping, getting on his left. Uh, taking a couple guys out of the game and then laying it off to Yakumakis, who was able to find uh, Shonda Silva in some space on rushing, and he finished this one so so well. It's yeah, it's just a uh, Silver Man, Silver Man, yeah. Silver Man. Uh huh. Nice. Silver Man. Mm hmm. Exactly. It's uh. Is it? Is it you? Is it me? Is it, is it you? Is it me? It's. <laughs> Basically, it was Spider-Man. It was... <laughs> he, yeah, whipped out the mask, uh, celebrated for his kid, got a yellow for his Love troubles, it. but, uh, yeah, Love a little it. coordination with the social media manager as well. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's reminiscent of uh, Obama Yang. It's reminiscent of some other players around uh -huh. the world who have pulled out, yeah. uh, you know, some Marvel characters. Uh Black know, Panther, we've seen that. Exactly. And Batman yeah. and all that from Ob Ob Obama Yang as well. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's one of those fun celebrations that uh, made some rounds on BR football and uh, a bunch of other uh, you know social media. And I mean, it's <laughs> it's just hilarious that this is the rule that you get a yellow for this, but you know, and then MLS will. Still, you know, they'll promote much. the hell out of it. Exactly. It'll be front page on the <laughs> MLS uh, section on the Apple TV, yep. promoting the playoffs. Tune in and watch this entertaining, dynamic, exciting football. Okay, we get a yellow. Yep. Sure. Yep. Thank you, sir. Sure. I may have another actually, because I think at that point it's like, yeah, this game is it's entertainment. So at this at this juncture as well, it's like. <sighs> You know, I, I feel like it should be almost like a, a yellow card or a red card type of like uh, type of mindset, a little bit, where it's like, okay, was this egregious? <laughs> was this something that tarnished the game? Was this something that uh, you know? It's like, okay, yeah, the the dude took off his shirt. Like, what is the big deal? But I think the 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 crux of it, it maybe is this. Was it irresponsible of Sean De Silva to have done that in the first half? What do you think? I think you can make a case either way. I don't think Jean is stupid. I think he knew, right? This is pre-planned. Mm-hmm. And I think he knew he was going to get the yellow for it. Mm-hmm. So if you go in knowing, and we don't know if he yeah. knew or not, because we haven't had that conversation with him. But if you're going in knowing you're going to get the yellow, you could make the case that it's a little irresponsible because you're sitting on a yellow mm-hmm. early on. And we saw what that did to us in Columbus. A completely different way to get a yellow with Moyen Ba. Yep. But early yellows can be crucial. Mm-hmm. That being said, I don't know, man. I'm here for it. Like, the vibes were just so high. It gave the team so much energy. Let him have it. I think it's a silly yellow to give, but then if you say, like, we're just not going to give by we, I mean, professional referee organizations worldwide, Mm -hmm. no more yellows for shirts off or any type of those celebrations within reason. It's not time wasting or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Does it take away some of the specialness of it then? Because there's a payment to Mm -hmm. do a celly like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like it means something it costs you something you're having to give something and that makes it maybe more special mm-hmm. when you know there's a price to pay for doing that kind of celebration mm. i like it I, it's uh it's an interesting thought for sure because then everybody else would be doing it and everybody then, do it right yeah, everybody's would... busting out mm-hmm. spidey masks and ripping their clothes off you know we got naked right. guys running around everywhere at that point maybe who knows <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, I think uh, you know the the people that enjoy that might be uh, apt to probably enjoy that a little bit more. So uh, perhaps, yeah, yeah. you know, if, uh, <laughs> for the uh, the female perspective, it might not be a bad thing, I guess. But uh, yeah, or, for other perspective, I mean, right. if you know, <laughs> for all the ups and downs this team has had, and we're gorgeous. This team has always <laughs> been beautiful, for, for for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> I, I saw Pineda was upset by it, or at least he appeared to be. He takes the mask, right? Tosses it to the ground. I get it. Coach, you're frustrated. Early yellow. Yeah. Uh, I doubt he's really laid into him too mm-hmm. much about it. I mean, John Day's still tweeting out Spidey, yep. you know? Yep. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it is what it is. It, 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 fortunately, it didn't cost us. Yep. So it, it, it's okay uh, for me. And um, I think I was just having too much fun and just just totally absorbed in, into the match and the energy that uh, the crowd was giving the players and the players were giving the crowd. It was it was the most mm-hmm. hyped up, symbiotic, like that yes. felt 2018, 2019, yeah. you know? It so was synergy, I'm for good sure. With it. I'm Indeed. good with it. I'm Indeed. good with it. And I, I think you made a good point there uh, about Muyomba as well, where... Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously in game one, it was, uh, he, he was on the ropes, uh, pretty much, uh, he, he probably should have been sent off, but, uh, yeah. in this match, completely different story. This man, on fire, re- retribution for sure, I mean, he was everywhere, everywhere, and making tackles, yeah. uh, really being really creative with the ball as well, and just spurring us forward. Uh, connecting our lines, and that is exactly what we need. 
Because, uh, yeah, that's been our Achilles all season long. Midfield, pretty much non-existent for most of, uh, you know, most of the games early on in the season. And uh, it led to, yeah, it led to a lot of our troubles. But this match, ooh, man, did he have a game. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't yeah. Yakumakis with the three goal contributions, it probably should have gone to Tristan Mugumbo because, yeah, this man uh, did everything besides score and assist. But... Yeah, he uh, he pretty much was that engine, and uh, yeah, he did a lot for us, especially with Mateus Wissetu going off early. In which, yeah, you know, we'll uh, we'll kind of maybe preview. Hopefully, uh, he's okay. Exactly. Said it was just in his calf, more be maybe more precautionary, precautionary. Mm -hmm. which would be good because he still had a great game too. I mean, everybody had a great game. Mateus was was back to you know pairing up really well with with Muyaba. Mm -hmm. um, and also, for what it's worth, I know, I mean, Yorgos is always going to get the, that Man of the Match award when you've got three gold mm -hmm. contributions. There's no question. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it. But defensively, I, I think a little shout to Miles Robinson, too. <laughs> he cut off a number of dangerous balls, and if not for Yorgos putting on, like, an incredible performance, he might be in Man of the Match conversation as, mm -hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because it's one of those, like, uh, Cucho Hernandez's goal, that's tough. I mean, it's like, that's just a, that's a really world-class touch there. And yeah. Yeah, at that point, you can't really do too much. Uh, he really had mm -hmm. nothing he could do about that, I would say. But, uh, you know, some, I, I think the, the stat minds, the... Uh, the people that give those uh, ultimate player ratings, they might dock them a little bit, and that's the uh, that's maybe the thing. I get but it. you know, it's uh, I get it. Yeah, but getting into that second half, though, yeah, the second half. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We uh, we continued our barrage. Uh, pretty much. Sure yeah. Did. Not not a tale of two halves. It was very much a mirror. No. <laughs> it was literally two. Yeah, one, man. Two one. We uh, played consistent 90. How yeah, about it? Yeah, it's insane. And, uh, you know, we obviously are here for it. It's uh, something where, okay, yes, maybe we didn't uh, get those goals until a little bit later when we actually made the substitutions. But, uh, you know, I think it's uh, a little bit in mind as well, those substitutions for Sunday. Uh, you know, preserving some of those legs, especially, you know, on the wings where we did a lot of our damage. We, uh, you know, I think spread uh, Columbus crew pretty, uh, pretty thin on some of the uh, some of those aspects where, yeah, they just couldn't handle us on those wings. And, uh, you know, Sean yeah. Silva, Saba, they uh, they did a lot of damage and then came on uh, Edwin Mascara and Tyler Wolf. To do more damage. And, uh, yeah, Edwin Mascara, yeah, his Mascara, goal. your boy. You've been singing his praises since day one. Go on. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, -huh. uh, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, he's a player that he divided a lot of people's opinion. But, yeah. man, he has come on in the last two months. And, yeah, you know, with an assist or with a goal, I mean, he is, yeah, con uh, contributing from the bench. And sometimes, as a starter, I super mean, sub. Yeah, it's a uh, super sub, man. Super sub, yeah. like incredible mm -hmm. super sub. We haven't had that since uh, I don't know, Mulraney. Jake yeah, Mulraney? maybe Mulraney, and uh, before him, probably Tito Fischalba coming off the bench uh, when Barco started to uh, kind of usurp him. Uh, fair, yeah. You know, yeah. and so yeah. it's one of those where, yeah, you know, like guys like him that just. Okay, you know, the team that started ran you ragged. And then now you have someone that, yes, okay, maybe <laughs> his final third decisions, maybe not always on point, but he's he's getting Fair. a lot better. Uh, mm -hmm. And, I mean, his goal. Ooh, like uh, That's a well-taken goal, man. Yeah. That He makes that look easy. Uh -huh. Do you know what the XG on that was? Probably like point, point oh, whatever it is. Yeah, You go got ahead. it, man. Point oh seven. 0.07 mm. on that, and he buries it. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, uh, playing a little 1-2 with Yorgos Yakamakis, and that's what it is. It's like, I think why it's so difficult is because it's at the pace that he's running at. It's pretty much like asking, <laughs> asking, asking like a, a supercar to, uh, you know, make a turn 
Like that's a like a U turn or something. Like yeah. super super hard. And yeah, he was able to do that. I think with his left foot, no less. So and it's not the best touch from Yorgos either. Let's be real no. here. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't come off Yorgos that well, and he still buries it. Mm-hmm. So Impressive. yeah. Yeah, he's he's on a confident streak for sure, and yeah, you know if you haven't caught the uh, the overhead shots, uh, yeah, I mean, my God, and yeah, awesome. brilliant, brilliant, and uh, yeah, shouts out to Van Emberger, uh, who uh, yeah, someone that uh, yeah, Ellie uh, United Fan TV, we've uh, we've conversed a little bit before, but he is the man behind those shots uh, on the Ellie United video Word. team, and wow. Like, dude, man, like killer shots and the package, uh, the video package put together. Yeah. Oh, lovely. It's lovely. really different. It's really innovative. Like, yeah. I'm not seeing any other teams offer up that kind of content. Yeah. Like, those oh, yeah. kind of shots. Uh-huh. That's really cool. We're seeing some oh, new yeah. stuff. I love it. Oh, yeah. Like motion tracking with the ball. Oh, man. hell yeah. <laughs> That is, that is a uh, that is a compositor's dream. That is a, a, a <laughs> you know, a lot of people in the uh, you know kind of um, after effects space. Man, they mm-hmm. uh, they're probably like, ooh, okay, now you have our attention, LA United. Uh, but anyway, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's kind of geeking out. Uh, we're both kind of like film people here a little bit, so yeah, we uh, we love that stuff. And uh, yeah, more of that, please. But, uh, yes. <laughs> so it's 3-1, and uh, yeah, you know, uh, the last goal, yeah, also brilliant. I mean, a really deadly counterattack. Caleb Wiley playing infield, and yeah, he's able to find him on a dime. It is a brilliant through ball. Uh, Tiago Amada, yeah, gets him behind, and I mean, his defender is not even in the picture. Like he he no. turned on the the afterburners, and then Gone. like turned on the nos, and then he turned on you know uh, <laughs> the jet fuel. It's ridiculous what he was able to uh, to do on yeah. the break, and then finish like that. Like talk about Lamborghini making a U turn. Like you know that that finish, that delicate finish, to be able to do that at full pace. Yeah, I'm just yeah. Like I, he needed that. He uh, he, did. he did. I think he said or expressed as much to Pineda that he was indebted mm-hmm. to the team. Mm-hmm. You know, we we were all upset at that that second yellow he got. No one felt worse than Tiago. Promise you that. Mm-hmm. So he needed a performance like that. And to be honest, probably wasn't even his best game, mm-hmm. but he still was impactful, mm-hmm. and he still got a goal. So if that's you know, our number 10 not having his best game. Cool. I'm good with that. Exactly. Because that's this is exactly what it is. Uh, we'll get into it in the the, uh, the preview. But, yeah. yeah. Tiago Mata has not played in Columbus this season anyway. So, it's one of those. You're right. Yeah. And so, uh, there is something. He, he did play there last year. I think so, yes. But... He would have been there. Okay, but yeah, 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 good point. Yeah, it will be huh. a lot of fun to see kind of, uh, you know, yeah. how he can really change the game for us there, but we'll get there, we'll get there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's so it's 4-1, uh, <laughs> you know, everyone's just having a hell of a good time. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, Columbus, they screwed, uh, scored another goal, and it's like, okay, cool, you know, you know at this point, it was like a complete afterthought. <laughs> No one really even cared. Uh, you know, there was... It crossed my mind a little bit. I'm like, okay, yeah, we... Uh, that's that's probably where we need to stop them. Uh, yeah, like, anything else, we yeah, probably need to batten down the, the hatches a little bit. Be a little tighter. Uh, you know, not, uh, not get a little too loosey-goosey. But, uh, yeah, ultimately, it's 4-2. And, yeah, if this is our last match at the Benz this season... That's a good way to go, if uh, if it has to be that way. Uh, it's a you know. It's okay. Yeah, it's like uh, forty two thousand. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's like. Uh, I think you you left the a pretty good The way you say forty two thousand. Yeah. 
<laughs> we take this for granted, right? I know, like, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, Tuesday night, forty-two thousand. That's normal. Mm -hmm. Go to some of these other stadiums, man. They, yeah. just, they don't pull these kind of numbers. They don't pull this kind of support. I try not to take it for granted when I'm in the moment and I'm there in that in that atmosphere of like, this is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I try not to let the cool ever wear off. You know, that shine because it's special. Even in year seven, whatever we're on right now, it's still special. It's still special. Yeah, and that's that's a really really great point because it's a bit difficult to to stay kind of. Uh, you know, stay stay hyped in some of the uh, the downturn times, but uh, yeah, man, this uh, as a playoff match, like you said, on a Tuesday, when other teams struggle to hit thirty, it's like, yeah, I mean, we are doing things in Atlanta that's it's just yeah. not like yeah, still it, doing it, right? It's Been not doing it, still doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's a, a Champions League night. It's not like I mean, it's it's an MLS playoff game two. And we show out. And so, yeah, we continue to do that. I mean, it's just uh, th that's how we get, you know, the the better players to come to LA United because, you know, that's yeah. that's that that um, yeah. that intangible that other teams cannot have. And, yep. you know, that's the, the brilliance. But, um, yeah, so uh, into kind of uh, a little bit of the quotes, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, Brad Guzan, he talked about, uh, he said, we talked about, quote, getting the fans and supporters behind us, and we knew that was going to be a crucial part. They were incredible throughout the entire game. It is a massive win and a pleasure to play here at home. Now we have to roll up our sleeves and go to Ohio and find a way to get another result. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that sums it up for sure. Uh, that's, yeah, like, LA United and yeah. the fans, we did everything we needed to do. And uh, now it's yeah, uh, up to some visiting fans and the club to uh, to find that that energy on the road away, yeah. in probably one of the more difficult atmospheres in the league because it will be yeah since it will be they've it's moved a, into it's Lord a hard Com. place to yeah. play. Mm -hmm. They they've lost one game, yeah, one game yeah. the whole season, yeah. the whole season, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's a hard place to play. Indeed, indeed. And, hey, shouts to Goose for, man, what a leader. Like, he's always grabbing that mic in the good moments and in the mm -hmm. tough moments. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy he was able to give some, like, grab the mic last night in a win, in a big, big win, in a really special win, like our first meaningful win in years. Yeah. Really meaningful, right? Like in a do-or-die type situation. Yeah, I'm really Backs happy that he was wall. able to just spout oh, yeah. some positivity for once, because he will always just give the quotes, talk to the media in mm. the toughest of moments. That's my captain. Yeah, and because uh, yeah, it's in terms of meaningful win. Like we have crashed out of some playoffs, we've crashed out of some cups. Uh, it's been yep. a difficult uh, road in some meaningful games. <sighs> I think it was Julian Gressel who was our last goal scorer in the playoffs, which is damning. But wow. we have we have rectified that, uh, and yeah, of course uh, we had four different goal scorers, like we mentioned earlier. And uh, yeah, you know, hopefully we can uh, still have some more in uh, in game three. But uh, yeah, to also uh, answer my own question, who were the other hmm. players that? Uh, had at least two goal contributions. It was Julian Gressel and Franco <laughs> Escobar. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically, you know, Yakomaki's, uh, yeah, he's he's put himself into, you know, a different different level as far as uh, playoff heroes for us a little bit, which is good. Uh, Shauna Silva, man, he could have had two as well. We didn't talk about the miss, but, yeah, that was a pretty we bad miss. We can talk miss. about it. It's It happens. Yeah, it happens. It does. Like every, mm -hmm. I, I don't care if you're Jande, mm -hmm. Joseph, or Mo Salah. Mm -hmm. World class strikers miss embarrassing, like sitters like that. Yeah. What was more important? What was what came after? That was yeah. ugly. Mm -hmm. But man, Yorgos, the the moment after that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. that yeah, was beautiful. Yeah, the the way he basically uh, you know riled up the fans to make sure they supported Shonda Silva after that miss. 
And especially as well, man, like he could have had four goal contributions. He was the one who laid it off on the transition. Where he could have. That would have been four. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah he could have been wow. selfish, took the shot. I mean, I, I think it would have been a different uh, thing if he hadn't scored already. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's one of those, man. Like, yeah. Uh, but Sh Silva, he did speak after the match about that, that missed goal. And uh, mm -hmm. he's like, quote, I don't mind. It's part of the game, you know. You score, you miss, you just forget about it, then go to the next game. And it's a good goldfish met mentality for sure. Like yeah, that's, goldfish. you know, that's uh, like very Ted Lasso-y. And uh, yeah, it's, it's what we need right now. Like we need, we need that psychological edge. And I think that's, uh, that's something that's very important here that uh, Yakumakis was able to help uh, cultivate with Silva. So definitely I think so. huge huge moment especially yeah. uh yeah if in game three if we, he has a moment that you know uh he's in front of goal like you don't want him to second guess himself you want him to be instinctual so yeah right. that's huge but um uh, yeah let's let's wrap up a bow on this match yeah, okay what are your final thoughts on this that it was just uh, for once a really complete well, not for once. I, I shouldn't be that harsh on the team. We just don't do it enough. But in the playoffs. A really, so for in a once. playoff, in a, in a meaningful match, mm -hmm. a complete performance, end to end, defense to offense, for, for the most part. I know two goals. I still think we played a pretty solid game, and they were just good goals. And it's just not something we've done since really 2019. Mm -hmm. And this was the type of performance that we needed. It had to be this. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be winning in penalties. Couldn't be 2-1. Couldn't mm -hmm. be 1-0, lucky goal in the 90th minute. It had to be like this to give us any sort of chance on Sunday in Game 3 of getting out of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, yeah, so... You know, our next match is on Sunday, and we will have that match preview later on in this episode. Yeah. But let's get into the news. And elsewhere around the league, uh, FC Cincy, they've advanced. SKC also advanced SKC against, advanced. yes, indeed, okay. against uh, St. Louis City. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they won the battle of uh, Missouri, but uh, as well... Yeah. Uh, Orlando City, they also beat Nashville. And, yeah, for me, that broke my bracket a little bit, uh, you know, because... Oh, yeah, you think? Yeah, I was not thinking that Orlando would uh, would kind of take care of business that easily against Nashville. But, hey, you know, no. uh, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it yeah. might be really interesting in the next round for, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, the other teams, um, especially mm -hmm. if we get past... We might have to play Orlando City, uh, but maybe we shall see. But anyway, uh, so uh, on to the next bit of news. Uh, yeah, LA United, they pointed out that in the 404 kit, uh, we've seen a lot of wins with four goals. And yeah, I mean, I think it's something that we probably need to wear the 404 kit in Columbus because, yeah. Please. Yeah, it Even should. No, apparently we're yeah. going forest. Kit. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was about to say, it's like, that's the one we should not wear. <laughs> that's the last one Burn it. we should wear. Uh, because, yeah, obviously, it's been a little bit dire in that kit. If you believe in uh, good luck or omens or curses. That's not the kit. It's not the kit, yeah. The past two seasons that we've had it. Uh, <laughs> who knows? I don't think it's the kit, maybe, but, you know, at this point... I don't even care if it's the kit. Let's just wear the the thing that makes us feel good. You know, it's that whole, you know, you look good, you play good. It's a objectively better kit, the four for kit, than the uh, the forest oh, kit yeah. as well. So, you know, it's way it, it's it's way better. And not that I'm like a massive fan from a design standpoint of the four four kit. But we're winning in it. Exactly. It looks good on TV. Right. It always looks a lot better when we're winning in it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. For for me as well, I think it's it's what it resembles. It's what it stands for. 
that's what, what it means, the meaning behind it. Exactly. As a massive Outcast fan, like that's that's what it is for me. But yeah, um, what it embodies. <laughs> indeed, indeed. But also another uh, good omen uh, at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, anyway, was the Rib Volcano, and uh, yeah, the <laughs> that thing inside the Mercedes-Benz uh, kind of boxing Yo. package. Yeah, we that, we've won every single time that that's been offered at the stadium. Uh, oh, have we? We have, at, at least okay. according to uh, to okay. Footy Mob. Uh, and Curtis, so you know it's good. It's uh, obviously you know we can't take that with us to Columbus, but you know if we have a next LA United match at the Benz, absolutely we should be serving Rib Volcano in a ridiculous package. Hell yeah, we it should. It was making its rounds on the Footy Scran on yes. on Twitter. People around the Twitterverse uh, were very impressed that we even offer food. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like that. And that's the thing. It's like Incredible. we. We offer it pretty cheap uh, for most of the, you know, the kind of daily items per se. But uh, yeah, yeah, that rib volcano, it actually looked good. <laughs> like I, I'd eat it. Yeah, like I, I have no idea. Like if you tried it, you had it. Let us know in the comments. How was it? Please. But uh, because <laughs> uh, if it's anything unlike a McRib, I'm there. But <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. anyway, All right. so, uh, yeah, moving on from that, Tiago Mata, he won the 2023 MLS Young Player of the Year. Uh, I mean, with 19 assists, 11 goals, yeah. <laughs> like, that's just period. Back-to-back -back years of him winning awards. Not the yes. same award. Yes. But he won Newcomer last year, Young Player this year. We got Yorgos uh -huh. winning, Speaking of. like... Yep, Yorgos uh -huh. Makamaki's uh, winning the Newcomer of the Year this year over the likes of Lionel Messi. But, uh, yeah, it is, uh, and yeah, he was absolutely proud about that. He uh, spoke Should to be. Felipe Cárdenas of The Athletic about that as well, where, yeah, he felt some kind of way. Like, he uh, he absolutely, he yeah, like, feels like this is, like, the a really good move for him to have come to MLS, even though... It might have been a little bit of a last-minute type of uh, move, but uh, yeah, it just was where yeah Carlos Bocanegra and the front office they showed up when he felt like he was being very much uh, kind of maligned by uh, the Celtic head coach Ange Postecoglou and uh, I butchered his name, but Ange and uh, you know it just like I've said elsewhere, it makes me dislike Ange even more as a gooner but <laughs> it is uh one of those things where it's like yeah how can you hate on Yorgos Yakamakis I mean it just you you have to be crazy and uh yep you know with also, his uh, you're welcome for yeah. Chelsea putting four yes indeed I uh, thank you I uh, thank you but uh you know if there's a, a lesser of two evils it's Chelsea but uh <laughs> But it is, uh, yeah, as well. Uh, so, I mean, for Tiago Almada and his uh, Young Player of the Year award, he very much, like, was the majority vote getter. Uh, not only with player vote, oh, yeah. but club vote, media vote. 60%, 70%, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I mean, he, and even 60%. Overwhelming. Yeah, exactly. So, he is the guy. And, uh, yeah, speaking of Almada... He got called up to the Argentina U23s. Uh, yeah, yep. you know it's a uh, in Japan. Japan. In Japan, yeah. halfway across the world. Exactly. Lord. That's uh, that's the annoying bit. Who knows if the season's yeah. gonna be over at that point? But uh, yeah, you know, hopefully it could be. Hopefully it's not, and uh, you know we'll we'll have something to worry about, which is kind of good. Yep. So. But, uh, yeah, as well, Miles Robinson, he got called up to the U.S. Men's National Team for the CONCACAF Na Nations League. The only MLS player to have been called up. So, uh, yeah, you know, Miles Robinson doing bits. Um, yeah, I mean, well-deserved, of course. But speaking yep. uh, of that. I don't miss him. Yeah, I know. Because speaking of that, we're, we're segueing perfectly. Missing him. Yeah. He, uh, he's getting a lot of interest from PSV Eindhoven, the Eredivisie side. And, uh, yeah, 
their uh, director of football, Ernie Stewart, who's an American, uh, he confirmed yep. the interest in Miles Robinson. You betcha he did. Yeah, and uh, that's per uh, Pro Soccer Wire. And uh, on a free transfer, of course, uh, because Miles Robinson is out of contract at the end of the season. And uh, Stewart, he did, quote, say he has been on our list for a while, along with a number of others, so that is correct. He can play well with, his, with space in his back. I saw the United States national team that you just don't pass him by and it's uh yeah i mean it's a i think pretty good league for him to uh to kind of jump to uh it makes sense yeah i mean he's got sense. friends he's got ernie stewart there who yeah. knows him mm-hmm. he's been keeping an eye on him u.s connection psv is doing really well this mm-hmm. season ajax is not mm-hmm. go get it man exactly if that's what you want and you can get a paycheck mm-hmm. and you think you can perform well i i wish him Nothing but the best, and he's going to be. That's that's huge tough. Miss. Yes, that's yeah. tough on on a Joseph type level. OG, yep, coming up. We've watched this kid grow into something special. Exactly. Um, but you you, you got to let him. You got to let him. Yeah. You know, not, I'm not mad at him for taking that opportunity. Nobody should be. Nobody exactly. Should be. Exactly. And it's one of these things like he potentially can play Champions League football with Eindhoven PSG have to. like it's like yeah like you you take that I mean it, it's like if I were him I've said this on other episodes as well you do it you you know I mean no question. it's just like of course uh, yeah if a, a bigger team even comes in for him okay yeah you sure. know like maybe you take that too but but you gotta take the chance even if exactly. it doesn't mm-hmm. work out as well I don't think it'll be Mm-hmm. No, I, don't, I don't think it'll be a disaster for him. I don't think it'll be like what George Bello has been experiencing over in Bundesliga 2, 3, wherever mm-hmm. he's at. Now. You know, it's been a right. struggle for him. Um, I but, think Miles is at a, a higher level than he is. Yes, and for sure. I think this will be a better fit for him. I think he will have more success. But even if it's not mm-hmm. incredible, you'll kick yourself forever if you don't take the chance. He's right. got to take the chance. It has indeed, to. indeed. Uh, and we'll get to another rumor in a second, but yeah, to speak on George Bello, like with Lask, he has uh, started 11 games this season, and Lask aren't doing too terribly, and so it's, uh, yeah, you know, he's kind of rejuvenated his uh, kind it's of fledgling. better than where he was out at Benfield, like that was not yeah. happening. He he got uh, pretty, pretty bad, uh, bad hate from a lot of the fans as well. Uh, you could. I, I checked in on some of the, uh, some of his posts, some of the uh, the social media as well for Bello. It was yeah, not not the prettiest, uh, but uh, yeah, he is definitely in a much better place now. But uh, yeah, speaking of transfer rumors for center backs, yes, uh, we got one today from Max Pugliese, uh, and that he's a River journalist. But, uh, yeah, River Plate player, or at least on loan from Defensa E. Justicia, Hector David Martinez. Uh, yes, he is getting interest from Atlanta United and the Chicago Fire, reportedly. And apparently there's been contact from the parties, and an offer is expected to arrive in January. And uh, apparently the player welcomes a chance to come to MLS now, there are some discovery rights, obviously, in play, so both teams can't be in for him. Uh, one of the teams mm. will be. Uh, and to be fair, we have had interest in him in the past, in 2021. Uh, yeah, he's a 6'1 central defender. He, uh, yeah, he's, you know, I think pretty uh, pretty sizable for at least this league. Uh, yeah. 6'1's big. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a good passer. Uh, good in the tackle, uh, but uh, yeah, kind of a uh, player that does commit a lot of fouls, and uh, you know, it was uh, it might be one of those things where you know it's another River Plate player, and some fans are a little reticent to bring another one of those on. Uh, he was LGP's understudy at River Plate as LGP well, pretty is, much. LGP is there. Yeah. You know, so it is uh, understandable to a degree that uh, you know if you uh, if you can't usurp uh, LGP, I mean, uh, yeah, you might be looking elsewhere. But uh, yeah, you know, not a ton of playing time in the past three years. Uh, his most was uh, 20 in one season, I think last season. But uh, yeah, 
25 years old. Yeah, do you think this would be a good move to probably, this is probably the Miles Robinson replacement? What do you think? Um, I don't know. I'd be curious to see or hear what he feels about it because he's surrounded by a bunch of former Atlanta United players mm-hmm. at Reba right now. Mm-hmm. With PT is there, mm-hmm. Barco is there, LGP is there. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder if they've been having discussions with him on just their experiences with, with Atlanta. Yeah. And what they've said to, to that uh, to yeah. that effect. Uh-huh. I haven't watched him at all mm-hmm. to know if he's really going to be you know, a suitable replacement for Miles if he's like for like or we need to adjust mm-hmm. our expectations and maybe a little bit the way we play to better suit him. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right. Hasn't got a ton of minutes. Looks like he's only played a handful of matches this season. So that's kind of uh, a drawback. But he's young. Still 25. Probably a value player. Won't transfer Mark has him at $3.3 million. That's not a lot, and we wouldn't pay that. Mm-hmm. I doubt. I think we'd probably His pay about half of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Salary would be low. You know, mm-hmm. 400 300 350 something like that, I bet. Um, I don't know. It, it, it could be. It could be. I'd just be really curious to to know what he thinks about it in conversations he's had yeah. with the with the boys about this club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, to be a fly on the wall because I think LGP would probably be uh, pretty pretty scathing about the front office, but otherwise probably. But the front office is totally <laughs> different now. So yes. there's that. Sans I mean, I, a couple guys, but yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, oh, Boca, Boca's still here, but it is yep. it is a different team now. But you're right, LGP will feel a certain way, and that's yep. justified. Right, I get it. PT is probably fine. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he got shipped off to um, mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia for a boatload of money, and he made a boatload of money, and then he right. got hurt. And now he's back at River, and I'm sure he's happy. Mm-hmm. Barco, I don't know how he feels. I really yeah. don't. He's probably he probably doesn't have much to say about it. I, I would think uh, he probably enjoyed yeah. his time here in front of the, the crowd. I think we yep. uh, we largely I think supported him pretty well uh, during his time so. here. Yeah, you know he got he got the appropriate amount of love, and now he's doing great at River. Yeah, exactly. So I think he's happy. Exactly. So, you know, uh, as well, it's like time does heal a lot. Not sure. all, as they say, Not all. but a lot. And uh, so, you know, it, it could be very interesting. Me personally, I don't. I think we should go for a little higher profile. I don't think we should be uh, going for outcasts at. Uh, you know, in Argentina, Fair enough. I think we probably need to be going for a higher level, and uh, especially yeah, if you're for starting. Yeah. If if he's not depth, if if we're looking for who's Miles going to be, mm-hmm. uh, I think I would. I think I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, yep. But that is the news, and uh, yeah, let's get into the match preview then. And yeah, game three, LA United, Columbus Crew, seven p.m. Lower.com field. It is do or die. Yeah, you have to win or go home or stay home if you're Columbus crew. But uh, yeah, you know, the I think the biggest question for the Columbus crew is how will Wolfred Nancy adjust if he does uh, at home? I mean, you know, will he will he account for you know the addition of Tiago Almada into R11 and you know will it be more of a kind of boxing match a heavyweight boxing match where the first few rounds you know they're measuring each other there's some you know some jabs but they're not really going for it until later rounds where they go for that right hook where they go for that big swing uh yeah what what do you think it's going to gonna you know maybe largely happen in this match if you want to keep with the boxing analogy i honestly think columbus is going to look for a first round knockout Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. they're going to go for the early goal and the control Mm -hmm. they know wilford is a great coach Mm -hmm. and they have great players and they know how atlanta operates we are a known entity in this league now Mm -hmm. they know what happens when we don't score first Mm -hmm. Yep. They're going to go for that early goal mm-hmm. and change the game state. So we are chasing. We're already sort of an open team. We like to play an open, beautiful game. We will be more open if we are chasing. They want that. 
So we've got to figure out a way to frustrate, box them up so that they can't, you know, play their style mm -hmm. and get that early goal. Because if they do, we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Point blank. Yeah, so, you know, obviously in game one, uh, we decided on a strategy that really was not the move, obviously. Uh, we looked stifled. We looked uh, pretty much toothless. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it is one of those things. Okay, yes, they're coming out like that. LA United, how should we come out? Because, yeah, we we played kind of a low mid-block a little bit, uh, you know, with the... Uh, the five-man, three-man uh, back line, you know, wing backs, and large in part, yeah, it was uh, very ineffective, and yeah, you know, we uh, we got turned around and uh, pretty much bullied a lot in midfield, even though we had at least uh, kind of uh, the same numerical uh, numbers uh, in midfield, but yeah, how do you feel like Atlanta United should come out? Not like we did. That style that the way we played when we lost 2 0, it's not that it's ineffective. It's that it's ineffective for us. We don't play that way. It can be an effective style if you play that way. If you're Philly, if you're St. Louis, some other teams that like to sit back and try to wait for the other team to make a mistake and counter really well. If you're used to, great, counter, won the ball, direct, go to goal. I would like to see us be a little more direct when we are. Um, trying to win the ball back in, in dangerous places as opposed to lateral and back passes. I'd go straight to goal. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is come out and play like we did at home. Don't play scared. And even if we are fortunate enough, God willing, to get that first goal, go for the second. Go for the second goal. We're much better off taking a few more risks and trying to get that second, third, fourth. However many goals you want to give me, keep going for goals. Our best defense has always been our offense. Mm. Mm. And that's the way we need to come out in this one. Make them uncomfortable. Mm. You no, know, even if we have to get a little physical mm -hmm. without stupid early yellows, please don't. Yeah. Um, make things a little chippy mm -hmm. via stop start play. That's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. We just can't let Columbus get in their rhythm and be comfortable in their possession. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's a great point. I think it's uh, you know, we we have to we have to look to probably stifle them a little bit early as well because there is a bit of yeah, you know, like you're saying, we get punched in the mouth early. It's hard for us to come back sometimes, especially on the road when we have tried to pretty much play through teams and yeah. it's uh, maybe not always been the most effective. But yeah, I think uh you know, the addition of Tiago Almada, I think just the, the danger from set pieces, from, you know, any sort of, yeah, pretty much, yes, sir. yeah, if any of our players get fouled, any area, like, he will find <laughs> a ball to, you know, find a player. And I think, Give him 35 yards. Yeah. Oh, if he's, especially if he's in 30, it's basically a penalty. Exactly. And so, you know, it's, it's better than a penalty at times. So it's... Mm. Uh, it's one of these where, yeah, the I think the Almada factor here is uh, is very big, and uh, you know he's he's got a little bit of momentum. He's got that uh, you know win in his sails now. That you know some confidence from getting a goal, and yes, you know it's uh, I think maybe one of the other factors that uh, we maybe haven't thought about. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't a factor, but uh, you know whether. At least for this iteration of LA United, has been, yeah. If if we don't play on like pristine conditions, it hasn't always gone the prettiest. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be 51 and 31. So you know, no rain, no rain, which is good, like six percent rain. So you know, 31 degrees, it's not too bad. It's I mean, cold. hopefully it doesn't snow uh, again. It's cold. But uh, yeah, it's like pretty chilly. I mean, do you feel like it's going to be a factor? Like, Yes. Yeah. But it shouldn't be a determining factor. Mm -hmm. Everything's a factor. Right. Everything's a factor. But this one shouldn't be determining. Mm -hmm. I'm What I think might be, and maybe I'm grasping at straws here, yeah. and you can tell me if I am. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, for Tiago, for a lot of these guys, 
they're, you're always playing for your next your next paycheck right your next contract your next transfer whatever it is this is a, a really big chance for a lot of these guys tiago in particular um probably even john day if you know I, I assume we will be exercising the option to keep him mm -hmm. to really make a statement here to really turn some heads to really get some eyes on you you know mm -hmm. if we were able to do this because if we beat columbus man there's not that much separating the rest of the East, right? Mm -hmm. Like, is Columbus that much better than Orlando? Not really. Mm -hmm. We're legit contenders for the Cup at that point, in my opinion, mm -hmm. if we can get past a team as good as Columbus on the road. Mm -hmm. I mean, FC Cincy kind of have a, a pretty big stake in all this as well uh, in the conversation. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, but the margins... Yeah, are fairly small in MLS, uh, at least on the east. Yeah. On the west, it's a uh, yeah, it's a little wider, but <laughs> it is yeah. uh, it is definitely yeah. I mean, let's not count those chickens yet, but we no. will get those predictions. And getting into that, uh, yeah, in terms of the unavailable players, Mateus Sesetu probably is a questionable uh, figure in terms of uh, yeah. in the eleven, but. But Chop Chol definitely is out, as he's out for the season. But pretty much everybody else mm -hmm. is available. And, yeah, for that 11, let's kind of go through the lines together. I mean, well, let's just be honest. Like, Do you feel like there's going to be any changes uh, besides uh, Hosetu from that 11? No, nope, a Johnny Fortune for Hosetu, and that's it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much, uh, yeah, same for me, man. It's, uh, yeah, I think the lineup pretty much picks itself now, which is really good. I think, uh, you know, at this yep. point, you need that continuity. Uh, and, yeah, we saw how they pretty much were clicking on a good number of cylinders. Yeah, fortune for me also comes in for Hosetu. And, yeah, I mean, Hosetu, uh, yeah, well, he was playing really well in uh, game two. I think you get a different element from a Johnny Fortune, especially on the road, you get a little bit more steel. You still get a good bit of ball security. Uh, you know, maybe not a player that uh, is going to stay back as much as uh, Hosetu does, as uh, Hosetu is Agreed. kind of a little bit more of that kind of deep line playmaker who, uh, yeah. you know, will kind of allow Muyamba to kind of roam and uh, pretty much put out some fires. But I think, yeah. You know, Fortune, uh, if he can kind of adapt that a little bit into this match a little bit anyway to uh, to make sure that he stays back a little more than he normally does, I think, yeah, you know, it could be a very good solution to, uh, to be able to, I think, pretty much make that midfield battle a little closer. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, Nagby, uh, we kind of neutralized him a little bit. I mean, yeah, he's still... Absolutely. You know. A little bit is a lot of bit with Nagby. Yeah. If you could do anything yeah. to slow him down, uh, you're uh, doing a lot. Yeah. You're doing a lot. Exactly. Um, so it, it should be good, man. I mean, and then if we're fortunate enough to get the early goals, we go up a goal or two, bring Amar in later on. If we need to, because playoffs, you, I mean, Tata did this with us, right? We played a little differently. Might need to if it's 80, 85th minute and we're leading. Lock it down a little bit. Amar comes in, or even Alonzo, Osvaldo. He hasn't played a lot, so I really don't expect to see him. Probably Amar before um, before we see Ozzy. But mm -hmm. could be. It's, it's not the worst. It's not the worst thing to have Hosetu out. It's really not. Yeah, especially yeah, it gives us a different look. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a uh, and it's a different look in a good way. I feel like versus uh, totally. You know. Yeah. Someone that yeah, I think, I think Hosetu. I think most realize defensively he's not maybe that player that uh, will do a ton for you. You know he'll uh, he'll track back. He'll uh, he'll mark well enough. But I think yeah, if you need a tackle, if you need uh, someone that can be a little bit more physical, Fortune is that guy. So, but uh, yeah, all right. Well, let's get into those score predictions then, Glenn. What have you got? Oh God! <laughs> Don't hold me to it. Um, uh, F it. I'm going to go confident here. Mm. They're going to score. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't remember the last time 
we've played Columbus and shut them out. I don't know if we ever have, to be honest. 2-1. Mm. Atlanta moves on. Ooh, I love it. I love it. 2-1. Uh, I hope so. It's close. Yeah. It's nervy. Yeah. It's a nail-biter yeah. for sure. Ooh. But we get it done. Okay, okay. Okay, my prediction. <sighs> I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong because cool. I have it as a 1-1. One, one, and we oh, no. lose on penalties. 4-3. Oh, no. I know, I know. I agree well, with you. If we go to penalties, we lose. Yeah. I want to be clear about that. If we yeah. go to penalties, we lose. Yeah. Guzan hasn't really shot, stopped a shot, really. It's, uh, you know, no. it's basically the post or the bar is our friend. Uh, so, yep. you know, I just hope that, uh, you know, Columbus just fixates on that for some reason. And, you know, if we get to 1-1 one, one, and we can somehow win in penalties. Oh, happy days. But uh, yeah. Riddle me this. <laughs> if it goes to penalties... Do you sub Guzan? <laughs> what are we talking about? Arteta here? Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> Zerbi? Like, no, nah, no, nah, that ain't going to happen. Um, okay. That would be no, I, severely I, emasculating I as well. for, uh, for Brad Guzan, uh, for the captain. I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that happens. Uh, I mean, because that's what it would be. I mean, it's like you, you wouldn't put Westberg on the bench. <laughs> You would put... And it's not like Westberg or, um, um, oh my gosh, uh, Deal yep. are like some phenomenal shot stoppers, mm -hmm. you know? So it's it, there's no upgrade there. So, yeah. yeah I, just, I, I mean, Brad, Brad stays on, and mm -hmm. wouldn't that be something? If he stops mm -hmm. a, if he saves a shot, legit, not the bar, yeah. he saves one, gets a glove to it. Yeah. And we win. Wow. <laughs> I think that's And a, we win? Yeah. Oh boy, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. It'll be incredible. But, guys, I hope I'm wrong. And, uh, yeah, let us know what your predictions are in the comments below. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's do or die. It's going to be very, very difficult. And, yeah, we're here for it on Sunday at 7 p.m. Make sure to tune in afterward for the live stream and the post-match reactions but uh, yeah, that's pretty much the episode except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, if you were to get a yellow for celebrating, to put a mask on, what character would you put a mask on for? I pose that question to you too, Glenn. Like, what, what would you put on? Well, you know it's going to be something Star Wars, right? Like... Mm. Yeah, is it Vader? Is it... Uh... Uh, what is uh, Kylo Ren? Is it a stormtrooper? Uh, Boba Fett? What do we got? It wouldn't make a it wouldn't make a great mask, but my favorite character is Obi Wan. So, uh, well, yeah, yeah, but there's no Obi Wan mask, so yeah, give me Vader. I mean, there's those president masks, so you know. <laughs> it would just look creepy and <laughs> it weird. Would, it would, especially with the cutout uh, eyes. That's the the worst part about give it. Give me, give me the Vader mask. You know what? I hope the boys have a Vader mask. It's mm. been Star Wars night at Columbus before, and we lost. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Oh man. Dang. Somebody take the yellow. <laughs> get me a Vader mask on the other side of the ad boards and put that shit on. Love it. That would be hilarious. Love it. Love it. Uh, well, for me, uh, you guys. Uh, probably have seen it if you uh, have paid attention on the live streams it's pretty obvious uh, if you did because it would be Deadpool so yep 100% that's the move and <laughs> the Merc with that's the mouth is uh, is how I'd go but anyway guys let us know in the comments below what you would put on as a mask really interested in what you have to say there but guys that is the episode there and there Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I've been AJ. That's been Glenn. Thank you so much for being on the show, by the way, Glenn. And uh, make sure to Absolutely. follow Five Takes on the Five Stripes everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, the podcast, all that. And, uh, yeah, show them some love. But, uh, yes, guys, remember to do all those things that I mentioned before. Thank you so much for watching. And... We will see you in the next video.